Today we'll learn that faithful people don't have to fit in, but I wondered what group you would fit into better. So we're going to play a quick game of this or that. Would you fit in better at a concert or at a football game? Go to the side of the room that you would fit in better. Would you fit in better at a concert or a football game? Next up, would you fit in better at a restaurant that serves breakfast, or would you fit in better at a restaurant that serves dinner? I know which one I would go to, but would you fit in better at breakfast or dinner? And lastly, would you fit in better at the movies, watching a movie and eating some delicious popcorn, or would you fit in better at the park flying a kite? Remember that no matter where you fit in, Faithful people don't actually have to fit in. Hey everyone, welcome to Bible Time. Today and all month long, we're going to learn about a very faithful person. His name is Daniel. And so each week we're gonna learn something new about Daniel. And today we're gonna learn that faithful people don't have to fit in. See, during this time, King Nebuchadnezzar, can you guys say that? King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar. No, 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 no. No, that didn't come out right. King Nebuchadnezzar. There you go. <laughs> and if you get a little wonky with his name, you can always just say King Nebuchadnezzar, like I just did. But King Nebuchadnezzar had just taken over this area. And he decided that he was going to tell his chief of staff to go and gather some of the royal family members. Let's read about that. So he ordered his chief of staff to select only strong, healthy, and good-looking young men, he said. Make sure that they are well-versed in every branch of learning, are gifted with knowledge and good judgment, and are suited to serve in the royal palace. Train these young men in the language and literature of Babylon. The king then assigned them daily rations of food and wine from his own kitchen, and they were to be trained for three years and then they would enter his royal service. So, King Nebuchadnezzar has sent his chief of staff to go select some members of the royal family. Well, who do you think they selected? Daniel. Daniel was one of them. Daniel and his three friends, and their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Okay, can you guys say those names? Shadrach, Meshach. And Abednego. Now Daniel and his three friends loved the Lord and they followed him with every word, with everything he said. They followed him faithfully. But now King Nebuchadnezzar is asking them to eat from his kitchen and drink from his kitchen. Well, there's some issues here because the foods that he's asking them to eat from don't align with their faith with God. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think Daniel, Meshach, um, Shadrach, and Abednego are going to just fall in line and try and fit in the best they can? Or do you think they're going to stand up and do something different? Well, remember, guys, faithful people don't have to fit in. So Daniel was determined not to defile himself, which means not to make himself wrong with the Lord by eating the food and wine given to them by the king. So he asked the chief of staff for permission not to eat these unacceptable foods. Now God, being God, who's amazing, had already given the chief of staff both respect and affection for Daniel. But he responded, I'm afraid of my lord the king, that's King Nebuchadnezzar, who has ordered that you eat this food and wine. If you become pale and thin compared to the other youths your age, I'm afraid that the king will have me beheaded. <clears throat> Whoa. So that's pretty serious. Now remember, faithful people don't have to fit in. And Daniel was very, very faithful. But here he's being put up against in a really hard spot because if he doesn't eat these foods that he's been ordered, something bad might happen to the chief of staff because the chief of staff is concerned that if Daniel and his friends do not eat this food, they will look frail and not as strong and ready as the other people. What do you think happens next? 
do you think Daniel and his friends are like, oh, okay, we'll just, we'll just do that then. We'll just fit in. Or do you think they're going to come up with another idea? Faithful people don't have to fit in. So let's see what they say. Daniel spoke with the attendant who had been appointed to the chief of staff to look over them. Daniel says this, please test us for 10 days on a diet of vegetables and water. At the end of the 10 days, see how we look compared to the other young men who are eating the king's food. Then make your decision in light of what you see. Well, he agreed to this. So Daniel and his friends only ate vegetables and water. They didn't try and fit in with everybody else because faithful people don't have to fit in. And Daniel and his friends knew that what King Nebuchadnezzar was asking them to eat didn't align with what God had told them. And faithful people don't have to fit in. So they took a stand and they asked for just 10 days to see how they were doing. What do you think happened? Do you think they became frail and, and weak? Or do you think God blessed them for not trying to fit in? Because faithful people don't have to fit in. Let's read and find out. God gave these four men an unusual aptitude for understanding every aspect of literature and wisdom. And God gave Daniel the special ability to interpret the meanings of visions and dreams. Wow. When the training period ordered by the king was completed, the chief of staff brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and no one impressed him as much as Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So they entered the royal service. What? <laughs> was your mind just blown? Because mine was. King Nebuchadnezzar had told his chief of staff to only give these men food from their kitchen, to only give them wine from their kitchen. But instead of falling into place, instead of wanting and desiring to fit in, Daniel and his friends chose to stand up because they knew that faithful people don't have to fit in. So they chose to stand with God and what God had told them. And because of that, they were uniquely blessed. They were so great in comparison to all the other men who had just chosen to fit in. God blessed them. He blessed them in their endeavors and they entered into the royal service. Faithful people don't have to fit in. In fact, we see this happen again in the book of Matthew with Jesus. Let's read Matthew 8, verses 18 through 22. When Jesus saw the crowd around him, he instructed his disciples to cross to the other side of the lake. And then one of the teachers of religious law said to him, teacher, I will follow you anywhere. He's saying, Jesus, I'm gonna follow you no matter where you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to live in, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. Let's pause there for a minute. Jesus is saying here that it is hard to follow me. It's not always going to be easy. In this case, he's saying, I don't even know where we're going to stay. But for you and I, he's saying that this isn't the most easiest task. You can't just fit in with every group of people that you come across. Faithful people don't have to fit in. When we follow Jesus, sometimes we stand out because faithful people don't have to fit in. Jesus goes on to say this. Another of his disciples said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus told him, Follow me now. Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. You might be thinking, Miss Courtney, that was a little harsh. Doesn't Jesus care? And the answer is yes. 
But Jesus is saying, we have important things to do. We need to go spread the word and we need to do it now. Don't fit in with what's going on over there. Stand out, stand with me. We have great things to do. Faithful people don't have to fit in. I like today's story because it reminds me I don't have to fit in, especially if that means I'm not honoring God. Faithful people don't have to fit in. And it's really amazing to know that I can be myself and live a life that honors God. See, I am Brittany. Hi. And there's so many things I love to do. I love lounging on the couch and eating popcorn and watching TV. I love playing games outside with my friends. Oh yeah! Maybe a little too competitively, but it's so much fun. There are so many parts about me that are silly, right? And creative and smart. Look, I have a dinosaur. It's a T-Rex and amazing and awesome and honoring God every step of the way. But when I'm all of these things, and I'm doing all these things, and my actions start to kind of sway away from what God wants, there's a problem. If I'm watching TV, but I have to sneak around to put on a show that everyone's watching, but I know doesn't honor God, or if I'm playing with my friends and I have to kick someone out just so that I can keep playing and I can fit in, there's a problem. This world is broken sometimes. And me changing myself to try and fit into all of those pieces doesn't fix the world. I'm not God, only he can fix the world. That's why all of my actions should be honoring him. When I am choosing to be faithful, I don't have to fit in because faithful people don't have to fit in. Today we learned that faithful people don't have to fit in, but I want to see what you remember from today's Bible time. True or false, Daniel and his friends ate from the king's kitchen. It's false. They actually didn't have any food from the king's kitchen. They had different food set up for just them. Question number two. God blessed Daniel and his friends by honoring him instead of trying to fit in. The answer is true. God did bless them. And finally, question three. It's a fill in the blank. Blank people don't have to blank blank. That's right. Faithful people don't have to fit in. So this week, just like Daniel and his friends, look around at school and try to find your fit with people who honor God, just like Daniel. That means they might not cross the lines that you think ought not to be crossed. It means that they spend time celebrating what God has done. It means that they're even willing to have conversations about God. Find your fit with people who honor God. Because remember, faithful people don't have to fit in, but there are people who honor God that could be your friends. Hey everyone, this song is called, We Are The Ones. Get your hand in the air like this and celebrate with us. We are the ones that stand for God and change the world. And then sweep it like this, take it low. Whoa, let's do it one more time. We are the ones that stand for God and change the world. Whoa.
Thank mm-hmm. you.